Yes, about the way that the Quran is picturing prophets also are different from the way that the Bible is picturing. Because according to the Quran, uh, prophets are role models, examples for society. God sent his instructions how to purify yourself, how to uh, get approximate to God, how to do righteous deed. And for this education, God is sending his messengers, his prophet, as a role model. And the Quran says, وَلَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهُ أُسْفَةٌ حَسَنًا It means that prophet is, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is your role model to follow. That's why in the Quran, there is no single mention of or single story about the prophet who was corrupted. Because the prophet could not be corrupted. If prophet is corrupted, what about other people? But when we come to the Bible, we see sometimes the prophets are pictured as the most corruptive, corruptive, corrupted people on the earth. For example, in, uh, if I don't make a mistake, in Samuel, in the Bible, Samuel chapter 11, verse 2 to 15, um, I'm not sure about the references, but um, I guess it's, that would be the reference. But you know, we can check in the, everywhere, you know, how Bible, describe David. David was a very dear prophet of God. But the Bible said that, for example, in one of his uh, stories said that um, David went to his to roof of his house and saw one of his uh, companion's wife was taking bath. She was very, very beautiful and David was impressed by her. David sent her soldier, his soldier, to bring that lady. They went to her home, brought the, the wife of his companion to the prophet of God, David. And I don't want to say, but what we read in the Bible, um, the prophet David had sex with her, and she, he sent her back to his house, to her house. And later on, the ladies, send message to David that I'm pregnant. David didn't stop there. Um, he asked the husband of his wife, this lady, to go to the battlefield where, you know, there are most uh, possibility of a person to be killed. So that person was killed. So David could have, you know, uh, the position of that lady. Or we have similar stories about, for example, the other prophet, like Prophet Lot, that um, according to the Bible, his daughters get her get him drunk and he had incest with his two daughters in two nights and got pregnant. What kind of stories we can find in the Bible? According to Quran, uh, prophets are examples of people, examples of society. If I want to teach my ch children chastity and read the book, read the scriptures to learn how to be pious how to have chastity. My children will say, it's prophet of God could not control himself and it was such a corruptive person. What do you expect me? Why I should not cheat on people's wife? Why I should be a pious person? When what you read will inspire you negatively or positively. Such kind of stories, which is completely lies, according to Quran, uh, we can find in the Bible and the Quran is exactly in denial of such kind of rumors with regard to the prophets of God or the examples of society. So even the pictures of God, prophets is very different uh, from Bible. Right. So um, how about uh, the style? Uh, of Quran, how does it deal with mean, coming to a social level? Because Quran definitely does contain uh, a significant, uh, I mean, a good deal of uh, historical events. You know, as 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 you put it, stories, for instance. So, what is the tone of those stories? What is the nature of of I mean, what's the, how how does Quran approach? Uh, you know, what, what, what's the style of of that? It's a very good question, Brother Sajid. Um, 
Quran is very careful which kind of story and what kind of language to choose when you know, is sending revelation from God. Because, um, first of all, in society there are many, many corruptions. There are rape, there are crime, there are incensed. Quran is not going to pick up none of them. You cannot find even one single story of rape or adultery or incest in the Quran. Whereas in the Bible, maybe we have at least 10 stories of incest. Even some of us saying that the Bible indirectly teach our children how to have incest, how brother can have incest with her sister, his sister, how father incest her da his daughter. And um, Quran is very careful about the stories of which are, is going to tell to people. First of all, what we have in regard to the prophets are just completely lie, are not true at all. And secondly, with regard to the stories of you know, incest that we have in the Bible, for example, it says uh, how a brother can incest his brother. Tell the story of one brother, I guess the son of one of the prophets of God, says he wanted to have incest with his sister. Uh, he pretended that he is sick and stayed in the bed and asked his sister to bring food to him. When the sister came and brought food to her, to him, he started challenging her and uh, wanted to have incest with her, with her. This kind of story, is, you know, is not going to inspire us. It's not going to teach our children. So, um, Quran has very specific language what word to use, what story to use, not to inspire the society negatively. That's why you cannot find any single story of incest or rape or adultery in the Quran. We have only one story of Joseph and Daleka, and it has no similarity to the story of the Bible with regard to just very general idea of that a human being how could be seduced by Satan to go toward the you know, worldly the desire and how one can control himself or herself and withdraw from committing sin. Very general way of approaching to this kind of issues. Even in that case, uh, we find symbolic language being used so that so as no specific details are ever mentioned that mm -hmm. could be obscene. So we see if Quran was ever a copy of the Bible, then we won't find uh, Dr. Misbah saying that. We won't find such a sharp contrast in the level of morality between the two books, uh, the way, the tone, they address uh, these events, irrespective of whether these events happened or not. We find a very sharp difference between the narrative of, of how these are described. That's right. That's so, um, coming uh, next to uh, the, the question of uh, what's the perspective of uh, these books, uh, Bible and Quran, on women? Oh, it's a very controversial issue. I guess today you are going to touch very controversial issues. Um, actually, in contrast to what we hear from people that Quran has no respect for women and Islam is despising women, we do not find such a thing in the Quran at all. Quran says, We have created you male and female. From the same entity, in different parts of Quran talking about, we created you from nafsan wahida, from the same entity. Then Quran says, man man salahan, man Whoever does righteous deed, whether male or female, have the same options, the same opportunity to have a spiritual evolution and a spiritual revolution to approximate themselves to God. So, but when we come to the Bible, the Bible explicitly explained that woman has been created from Adam. 
um, and it said that woman has been created f from man and for man so like you know women are serving men uh, as they have no other purpose just to serve men uh, for example I have this in the um, Bible, Holy Bible, the New American Bible version. In Corinthians chapter 11, there are different verses which could be helpful for people who want to know about the um, perspective of the Bible with regard to women. Just I want to mention some of them. For example, it says, um, in verse 7 says, in chapter 11, verse 7 says, A man, on the other hand, should not cover his head, because he is the image, the image glory of God, but woman is the glory of man. Verse 8, For man did not come from woman, but woman from man. Verse 9, Nor was woman created for a woman, but woman for man. And continued. On the other part, it says that um, women should not talk to the church. If they want to learn, they must ask their husband at home. So, because men are um, their head. It said that, the Bible said that um, men's head is Jesus, but women's head is their husbands. So, they must ask their husbands. Thus, our donate to their husbands. So we have such kind of things in the Bible, but we cannot find any verse in the Quran to look down at the at woman. Right. So um, Bible looks at uh, women as completely subordinate mm -hmm. to men in all respects, to the extent that it uh, it maintains that explicitly that a woman was created from man. And it's it is kind of a subordinate creature when compared to man. But Quran uh, is not like that. So um, coming to the next um, question, how about uh, religious diversity? For instance, uh, people who are not in, in the eyes of Bible, if people who are not following Bible, in the eyes of Quran, of people who are not following Quran. How do these two books uh, view such instances? Yeah. We have a verse of the Quran. It says, La ikrah hafidin. There is no compulsion for anyone to choose a religion. According to Holy Quran, it says there is, there is, no, there is no social pressure for a person to choose a religion. Yes, we have responsibility before God, but we must have social freedom and we choose our religion. So Quran acknowledges religious diversity, whether you want to be Jewish, Christian, even atheist, there is no social force. Law ikrah, but in no compassion and want to choose a religion. But when we come to the Bible, it says you must follow this Bible, the same version, the same things. For example, when, when we learn that in Christianity we have more than 6,000 sects. 6,000 sects. According to the Bible, the term in chapter 13, verse 7 to 11, this 6,000 group uh, even do not acknowledge each other. They must even, you know, um, must in the, stone each other. Because in the Bible, says uh, the determined chapter 13 verse 7 to 11 says if your beloved wife or brother or sister or mother or father seduce you to worship God who is different from our God we should not have pity on him we must you must be the first to stone him to death I was talking to uh, one of my um, Jewish colleague and um, he was saying that this verse is not Meaning this, we should, you know, uh, not take a verse out of the context. I don't want to oppose him. No, I have great respect for him as a scholar. Um, but I want to say, if we just take the text as it is, so there is no acknowledgement for religious diversity in the Bible. 
whereas in Quran we see such diversity. Right. So um, that, let's come to the next level. Uh, we started from go the concept of God and prophets, and then social life as it is, you know, portrayed. And then, uh, how about Sharia?